Hey everyone, this is Nitro. With the update just released today on Thursday, December 19th, I thought I would cover the changes that were made in game. Because actually, there were quite a few changes that were not announced in the patch notes which have made it into game. So, let's start with the first one. The first one is actually in the hero card, where first, there is now this Apex of Glory button that shows your top ranking in each Apex Arena season. So you can see for Season 1, it says I was top 32 in the final position, and for Season 2, my current score is just gold 2. Next, also in the hero card, we now have the opportunity to choose a background for the well, hero card itself. For example, here we have the default background, but now I can choose a desert adventure background, which I got from one of the feats, and there's also another feat in the future, City in the Clouds, where you log in for 500 days to obtain this achievement. This Desert Adventure background requires you to log in for 30 days. So I'm just going to apply this, and we can now see that my background has changed. Another unmentioned change is to Cherie. Because if I click on her, see? She says nani nani once again. So. I know they've removed that previously, and a lot of people made complaints, so it seems like as long games listen to us, and it's back by popular demand. So it's good to see that they brought that back, because it was one of the better sayings that Shuri made. Next, another unmentioned change, which is quite useful, is in the guild store section. If I go into the guild store, the first change is that the gold purchase limit has been raised from 5 times per week to 10 times. So you're going to need to use 8,000 guild medals now if you decide to purchase all the gold as opposed to 4,000 previously. But I will likely do that because gold is by far my biggest limitation in terms of growing my party and upgrading my characters in general. Other than that, another change has been that bond seeds, bond flowers, bond feathers, and heart bond items can now be purchased with guild medals as well. Uh, these were items that you previously had to farm in order to upgrade character bonds, but now you can purchase them. So, very much a good thing because they tend to be fairly reasonably priced, except for the heart bond items, I think. So maybe you can focus more on farming for level 55 class materials with the three daily runs you have to do to finish that daily feat. Right? Because every day, there is a feat that asks you to complete three time rifts. Per day. Other than that, there is of course that new feat, complete one gate of fate of any hero and you get a bit of gold as well as a jewel for that. And there's been a few new feat additions, two that I noticed. The first one is Continental Warrior where you log in for 365 days in total. This feat gives you a new Matthew skin, the Swordsmith Metal Sorry, the Swordsmith Hero skin. I like the way the sprite looks, I don't particularly like the way he looks. <laughs> but that's my opinion. And of course, there's also the other feat that I had previously mentioned, the 30-day login for the Desert Adventure background for the Hero card. In addition to these changes, there is also, for Heroes, one big surprise was actually a change to Lance. Lance is now a member of the Legion of Glory. As for whether this is actually useful, I don't think- Other than that, there is of course that new feat, complete one gate of fate of any hero, and you get a bit of gold as well as a jewel for that. And there's been a few new feat additions, two that I noticed. The first one is Continental Warrior, where you log in for 365 days in total. This feat gives you a new Matthew skin, the Swordsmith Metal. Sorry, the Swordsmith Hero skin. I like the way the sprite looks, I don't particularly like the way he looks. <laughs> but that's my opinion. And of course, there's also the other feat that I had previously mentioned, the 30 day login for the Desert Adventure background for the hero card. In addition to these changes, there is also, for heroes, one big surprise was actually a change to Lance. Lance is now a member of the Legion of Glory. 
as for whether this is actually useful, I don't think it really is. Because if you play Legion of Glory and you did all the feats in the first week, you got the free Shuri. And you're probably going to use Shuri as your flyer. So, not quite sure why Lance got that uh, achievement, uh, got the new faction. I guess just for storyline purposes as well as potentially using him for Guild Wars. Moving on. So, you can see that my heroes are actually currently all at level 61. If I select on Matthew, he's actually capped at level 61, even though he's at max hit points or max experience. The reason for this is because the reason for this is because your maximum hero level is linked to your own personal level. Because my level is level 60, my heroes are currently capped at level 61. Because it's your level plus one. If I want to raise them to level 62, I need to raise my personal level up to 61. So I'm going to have to gather some experience and whatnot. Which is why the missions, now that they, they give me experience once again, it's going to be handy. So they've stopped giving me gold, but they started giving me experience. And speaking of heroes, there's also a brand new SR hero that's been introduced in the game. If I go onto the summon screen and go into the gallery section, under heroes and take a look at the SR heroes, at the very end, there is now Alfred. So the main reason I noticed that Alfred was introduced into this game in truth was due to the training ground. Um, when I was setting out my expedition today for the flyer and aquatic units, Alfred was one of the recommended heroes and his icon was shown up, but I knew I'd never seen this hero before. So kind of a surprise change to me. Other than these changes, there is now also this new button here in the bottom left of your menu. If I click on it, it says this feature will unlock after main storyline chapter endings and beginnings 6 is completed. That mission is not yet available, so we'll see when it does become available. So I have no idea what this button does until, it, until later on, basically. There is also, and I think that pretty much covers all the changes I've noticed so far that were not mentioned in the patch notes. Oh no, sorry, there is one more. In the Lannas, in your hero section now, there is now an Awaken tab. The Awaken tab can't actually be used at this time and won't be available for quite some time because first of all, it requires a hero level of 70. And second of all, it requires these materials that are not available at this time and won't be for a while. But what this tab does is for awakening your hero and the awakening has two phases. The first phase will increase your obtainable skill cost maximum by 1. So that way your characters can actually have 6 points total instead of just 5. So you can choose to bring let's say 3 2 point skills instead of just being stuck with you know, 2 2 point skills and 1 1 point skill. Which is a nice bonus already. But the second, the phase 2 upgrade of the awakening gives these characters a new skill as well as the exclusive skill animation. This should be their 3C skill, as they're commonly referred to at this point, which costs, of course, 3 skill points, and they have a lot of power to them. Uh, generally speaking, it makes a lot of characters much more usable in PvP than they were, and for characters that are currently not useful at all. But once again, that update is going to be quite some time. We're looking at a few months away. All right, so that covers pretty much all the new changes that I personally noticed. Other than that, it's pretty much just changes that have already been mentioned in the patch notes. For example, we see here there is now chapter 49. I'm on chapter 48 and clearly there's 49 and 50 up ahead here. Right? So, and then that, there's probably going to be some of those new danger maps that I have to unlock and so videos to do this week. In addition to that, of course, the Anarchies have now all gotten their level 70 version, so I'm going to have to unlock those and probably start farming these Anarchies as well. 
in terms of events running, there is the Echoes of Light, which is for Rainforce and Betty skin, right? The two new skins for the two new heroes. You can also pick up the older skins of Angelina, Shafaniel, Zerida, and Lana. And then finally, of course, for the other event, it's the Betty and Rainforest Limited Time Summon Banner, Red Moon Rising. I'm not going to draw on this banner because I don't think I'll ever use either hero. And just taking a quick look at the summons that have occurred so far, you know, I see people who are summoning for them, but I'm also seeing a bunch of off banners, right? Lanford, Illustrial, Shafaniel, you know, Lanford, Alte Muller, Tiaris, Gizaroth, right? Bozel, Bernhard, etc, etc, etc. So just seeing all those, there is always the threat of getting an off banner when you summon on one of these regular ones. And given I don't plan to really use either hero, I'd much rather just wait for when they appear on a Destiny summon banner. And then that's when I can pick up a copy of them if I really want to collect the heroes. And other than that, I think the other changes are pretty much just... Oh, sorry. There is one change I forgot to mention, and that is in the store. Skins. You can now purchase the Apex Power skin for Bernhard, the Season 1 Champion skin. So let me just quickly equip that to show it off. Very pretty skin. Uh, I really like the way it looks. And so if I select Bernhard, this is how it looks like. So the sprite looks amazing, he looks awesome, and the skin does say Royly Roga Valley. Congratulations to the Season 1 Apex Arena Champion. So let's wear that. So there is that new skin as well. Now I should also mention this skin is fairly expensive. Um, it is. 118 Trinity vouchers, or sorry, skin vouchers, as opposed to 98. But I think it's worth it. So, and I did have 118 skin vouchers on hand. So, fortunately, I was able to pick that up. And other than that, yeah, it's just the remaining things will be everything that's already uh, mentioned in the patch notes. For example, the Secret Realm store. Oh, yeah, the Secret Realm store has the Trial of Faith for Ledin as well as the tentacle staff for all meta. Tentacle mucus, oh my god. Okay, so one thing that's important to note, and you should be careful about this one, is in the skin section here, it shows Bamboo Sword Heart, which is supposed to be available for six outfit points. But if you click on it, it actually sends you to the Storm God skin for Diharto, and it's asking you to spend 98 skin vouchers. So be very careful about this right now. Clearly they implemented this in advance and this skin currently doesn't exist. So it's sending you instead to a skin from the store, right? Because the Storm God skin is the Hartos regular skin. So just be very careful about that. Do not try to purchase it <laughs> if you have some of these outfit points saved up. And then finally, yeah, the other changes are pretty much things that were already mentioned. The level 70, any key bosses, so I have more battles to do. Um, oh, and another change was actually to Timeless Trial. I am currently on the S Trial, but I can actually click on the sweep button right now. So, you can now sweep up to the SS level, which is a nice plus, in my opinion, right? Uh, so I was able to sweep tw five more battles instead of having to just auto battle those fights. So one additional sweep, or so one additional level of sweeping. Now I only have to do the SS battles and the SSS battles. So with that, I think I've covered all the new changes and additions to the game at this time that were the most noticeable. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. 
And on that note, Nitro out. <laughs>